Andy, much being made about the fact that this was uh, something predicted before it actually happened. People could actually get uh, their eyes and, and watch it come down. Yes, good afternoon. Yeah, that's the exciting piece about this, is that it's a good test of the system to see how well we can predict the movement of, of planetary bodies which are coming close to the Earth and, and how accurate the, the predictions are. And, and although this is a very small piece, it was only one metre across, very small indeed, the fact that we were able to track it uh, and actually given a good exp a, a good description of where it was going to enter the Earth's atmosphere and where it was going to explode in the air because it, right. it was too small to drop anything on the ground, it's quite astounding, really, when you think about it. And part of the protection system to protect our planet from, from much bigger objects, of course, which could come in towards us. And is it an asteroid or a meteoroid? We're, we're sort of trying to scratch our head as what we should be calling it. Yeah, they're calling it a meteoroid because it's only one metre across. It okay. is a piece of an asteroid. It is a piece of an asteroid which comes up, so it's a little bit that burns up in the atmosphere. Um, it's probably a rocky piece. We've got meteorites here, so it's it's probably a rocky sort of object, a little bit like this. Um, and that's something that's actually come down already, is it, in, through space? Yes. Yes, this is a meteorite. This is a meteorite. So, well, this is this, the stony one. This is the stony ones which you get. You also get the iron ones, which are like this which are much heavier and much more yeah. difficult because these are much bigger objects which crash in. If you remember in Russia a few years ago, the, the Chelyabinsk meteorite, which exploded in the air, uh, and that, that was about five, six metres across, and that dropped little pieces, which oh. I've now dropped on the floor. Dro yeah. uh, <laughs> only, on, only very small pieces actually came from that one. I hope you can find that again, because obviously it's quite oh, important yeah. stuff. Um, let, let me just, while you're with us... Um, Reflect on what Marco Rubio has been saying in the United States about these sightings of these Chinese, if they are Chinese. Mm. He is, of course, chairman of the U.S. Uh, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, uh, saying he's long pushed for the destigmatization of UFO reporting. Also, Christopher Mellon, deputy assistant uh, for defense during the Clinton and Bush administrations, admonishing the Air Force for not having uh, noticed these unidentified craft before. What are your thoughts on what's going on? I think there's some truth in that. I mean, everybody says UFO and immediately they think of flying saucers, which is exactly not what a UFO is. It's an unidentified object that happens to be flying in the sky. Yeah. And I think there's, there's been a lot of stigma associated with it. Because, and that's a bit unfortunate because we're missing some good natural phenomenon because of this, which has been discovered since, realised that what people were seeing was some unusual natural phenomena which we hadn't seen before. But I think, yes, I mean, it's quite important that some people should take these things seriously because you never know what is up there. They are usually balloons, strangely enough. Balloons cause a real big problem um, for people because they, they're not really sure what they're looking at. They reflect a lot of light, yeah. especially where the balloons, interesting enough but yeah i think there's some truth in that people should take things seriously but unfortunately you could get a flood of people seeing a paper bag blowing high in the well, atmosphere quite. reflecting light yeah. and immediately ringing it in yeah, I, 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 obviously, uh, we, we're not going to get, um, hopefully, uh, all the sort of... Uh, I think it was a, a car hubcap, wasn't it, that was filmed? It was one of those famous ones from the 1950s. <laughs> However, oh, yes, yes. I, I could mean, you what, in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, what, what's, what's, what's the monitoring like? You, you talked about the monitoring of asteroids and so on, but, I mean, have we got enough kit to actually look at everything that's, that's going into our airspace and space? Yeah, I mean, obviously the defence system do, do a lot of work and NORAD is are quite good. I mean, it's interesting that, that the phenomenon such as uh, as the um, the great gamma ray bursters, huge bursts of gamma ray radiation, they were actually first detected by systems which were used to detect nuclear blasts on the Earth. So yeah. we can actually utilise defence systems to actually do a lot of this work, which is quite strange, right. really. Uh, it's just what they're looking at and what they're, they're detecting differently. Uh, and actually, some of the defence systems have actually detected objects entering the Earth's atmosphere, which were, again, natural objects. Um, but, of course, because they were classified, nobody ever got the data till about 30 years later when we said, oh, wait a minute, there's a lot more objects entering the atmosphere than we anticipated. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's quite a good system going on in place. There's going to be a better system with a satellite being launched in a couple of years, which is going to look sunward because we can't see anything sunward at the moment. We need a satellite for that, and that's going to be launched very soon. And that should give us very good coverage to protect this planet um, when it happens, bearing in mind that we do get a, about 100 tonnes of, of dust from space landing on the Earth every day. So we actually get a net gain of thousands of tonnes of material coming in from space every year.